Hello all, uh, in this uh, video series of office procedure, uh, we talk of various aspects uh, to improve the office procedure. In this particular video, I will be dealing with noting and drafting. So let us first understand what is, what are notes and where it is in which context, this uh, context, this word uh, notes is used. So of course, uh, you may know that uh, already that uh, there are uh, generally two parts of a office file in a government office, one is note sheet and the other is correspondence and whatever is written in the note sheet that is referred to as notes. But other than that, actually when an officer or when a superintendent and when a section officer, he records some kind of remarks, you know, so any kind of remarks or instructions which are recorded in a TUC, the paper under con consideration, the received or you can say dark on dark. So that is referred to as notes. So it is not only uh, the ones which are recorded on the note sheet, but also whatever is recorded on the uh, uh, this PUC or dark that also has to be referred to as as the uh, uh, notes basically. So these notes have to be taken care of and uh, they have to be brought to the note sheet. So one very important factor uh, which we have to uh, remember regarding noting is whatever is recorded on these PUCs, it has to translate into the note sheet as well. Translate into the note sheet because when it comes to the official record, ultimately the note sheet is regarded as, as the final uh, document and the, the note sheet whatever is discussed whatever is mentioned that is taken as final so it is it has uh, to be understood that all such discussions have to translate into the note sheet if there is any kind of disagreement over the notes and remarks mentioned over a correspondence between different levels of officers that also everything has to be brought into the note sheet so this is what you have to understand now the first thing is any kind of note made should be concise should be very very concise and it should be to the point and uh, it is not like writing essay writing long type answers and it is not uh, how flowery language we use and how many words we use we should be very concise and we should be very to the point when we are making the note and the first thing is to be uh, understood is that this paper under consideration and all these previous facts, previous PUCs and facts, it should contain all information about the PUCs which are being uh, considered in the present case and all the facts, uh, all the facts of the case uh, which are being, uh, which are important in this present case. So that also has to be considered. So all these should be uh, formed a part of your note and it should be assumed that whatever is mentioned in the PUC, verbatim should not be reproduced. So there is no point of having a PUC, right? So whatever is in the PUC, only the gist has to be presented and it has to be assumed that all levels of officers and subordinates, they will be reading through, they have the access to the PUC. So no need of the verbatim reproduction. Thus, the basics, uh, the gist of the PUC can be mentioned. Second, uh, uh, a very important point uh, what has to be understood is that whatever is mentioned on the this thing, the PUC, as I, as I already covered in the first point. So, whatever is mentioned in the PUC should be brought to the note sheet. That is very important and uh, after several years of uh, working in government offices, I have seen that that part is not done. The instructions which the officers record on the PUC are seldom recorded back into the note sheet. So that is something we need to do. Docketing has to be done. So now let us uh, try to understand what this uh, docketing uh, is about. So whenever you start a new note on the note sheet, first of all, we will just take an example here. Uh, when you make the first note in a note sheet, two lines have to be drawn using red ink and then here you have to write the letter number of the PUC 
and the date of received dated so and so and then the uh, basically noting will start so every file entry in the note sheet has to be in in this way and then after that the reading assistant will record his note here and sign on the left side so this is another point which we have to understand is that after doing this docketing this is called docketing so in in uh, cases of uh, received when you are receiving a puc docketing has to be with red ink and in case of issue it has to be with blue ink now next point what you have to understand is after it is docketed the dealing assistant will make a note so he will write to eac or adc that so and so puc was received these are the fact of the case and this is suggested and then he will sign on the he has to sign on the left side so this is something many uh, in uh, many uh, files i have seen that this positioning this docketing is not very properly done so this is what you have to understand that the dealing assistant has to sign on the left after making his note and then officer will record his final observation and he will sign on the right side so this is the standard uh, procedure of note making as far as uh, the uh, standard office procedure manual and all the circulars which are issued by uh, central government and state government considering that this is the standard prototype of how a note sheet should look like now another point regarding this uh, noting you have to understand is that nothing can be uh, corrected or pasted over so no corrections if there has been some mistake it's our to human we every human day does mistakes and it's how it happens uh, whether it is mistake of fact or whether other kind of mistakes are there mistakes will happen uh, but if there is suppose one note has been mistakenly written so now you should not or one should not put a new note pasted on that or you know some kind of a, a correction fluid etc etc all those things should not be done what needs to be done is a new note should be recorded subsequently and the correction should be mentioned in the new note without touching the old note so this is very important that note shall not be corrected only subsequent note should be made and this correction should be mentioned in the subsequent note now next very uh, important point is that all oral discussions oral discussion should be translated into the note sheet whatever instructions your superior has given you if there is no written order in that uh, regard so that the fact that such and such directions have been issued uh, will have to be put in the note sheet for the record of future reference now uh, already i have covered this that whatever is mentioned on the previous note or in the puc this is already there for the next uh, officer to to be uh, you know to see you should not verbatim uh, that verbatim reproduction of facts should not be there many a times we see that dealing assistant has made a note and then the next superior has copied the same note and then the next superior has copied the same, same note so what's happening is wastage of time and effort for so many levels so that should not happen so verbatim reproduction of previous note should be avoided if if you have something new to add if you have any corrections to be done do it and if you have some suggestions or remarks comments please mention it but do not verbatim uh, or uh, this you know verbatim reproduction should be totally avoided if there is a long note then the next point is paragraph paragraph usage if there is a long note to be written please use small paragraphs number them so that it is easy to uh, read for the next official and also it is easy to refer if i want to refer to the particular para of a particular note it is very easy to refer uh, uh, based on page number and para number so that referencing becomes very easy so every big note should be broken down into small paragraphs and then essentially it is easy to make a reference so this is uh, what you have to understand docketing i have Uh, already explained uh, which is very very important so regarding the noting uh, let's just quickly uh, remind uh, let's go back 
and uh, recollect one is what what are notes is not just on the note sheet but also on the PUC everything should translate on the note sheet your note should be concise PUC is in fact everything should be included docketing as I said docketing should be done no corrections only subsequent note should uh, reflect what is the issue and then oral discussions should translate into the note sheet and then use paragraph style of writing for bigger notes so this is basically uh, the uh, main uh, features of the noting process now coming to draft like coming to the draft how a draft has to be made so few points i want to mention on that also uh, now draft is only to be prepared when it is instructed to be prepared for example in some cases the puc may not require a draft to be made so please wait for the instructions from the competent uh, level of uh, authority and then only this draft should be prepared because in some cases there might not be any need the puc can simply be filed for information so this decision has to be taken at an appropriate level now another thing while making draft is that use of names is only to be done in certain type of letters usually in our letters and communication it has to be referred to the particular post like for example you are writing to executive engineer pwt buildings there is no requirement of mentioning the name of that person unless it is a classified communication which is meant only to be seen by him unless it is something of a demi-official letter now there are different types of communication this also i will discuss in uh, one of the videos there are different types of official communication so one is demi-official communication where there is communication between two officers so that there you have to mention the name generally in all letters and all the normal letters this uh, name usage has to be avoided so uh, another point uh, regarding the draft is that if you are having if you are sending the draft by special means so generally the drafts are sent how by normal post uh, by the process server by the delivery person etc etc but if you are spending sending the draft by speed post by registered courier so on the top right corner of the letter <coughs> this has to be mentioned that the same letter is being sent by speed post or by registered post or by special messenger so that that is recorded in the letter format itself so this is a very important thing which usually dealing assistant uh, they miss this uh, kind of a point then when you are putting up a draft you have to tag it with a paper slip and write DFA on it. DFA stands for draft for approval. If there are many draft, then they can be DFA 1, DFA 2, DFA 3 and you have to position the tags in such a manner that they are visible separately. DFA 1, DFA 2, DFA 3 on different papers. So you have to tag like this so this tagging and uh, formatting is uh, very very important uh, now one very important fact regarding drafts is that don't print multiple copies in some cases some of the dealing assistant they assume that the draft is whatever they have drafted is final and there won't be any corrections on this draft and they print 10 copies and they put for signature that is very wrong because there is a possibility that the officer may change the draft may update the draft may further uh, suppose uh, add some points into the draft modify the draft and then again those extra printed copies will go to waste so in order to save paper save effort and everything uh, only one copy of draft should be printed initially only one copy initially if there are any changes once the draft is signed by the competent officer then you can put up the, uh, multiple copies in a signature pad and get the signatures so uh, in the first place only one copy should be put up in the file now another uh, bad practice which is generally seen is that uh, multiple PUCs are put simultaneously and multiple drafts are put simultaneously related to these different different PUCs 
Now, when an officer gets suddenly, there are four PUCs and four drafts, it becomes very um, uh, difficult to uh, do justice to all of it and then in hurry, is simply they just sign it off. So the best practice is that once one PUC is uh, received, the draft relating to that is prepared and put up, considered, once it's final, then the next PUC. So this will automatically happen if the dealing assistant is regularly putting up the PUCs. If the dealing assistant is uh, not very active and uh, this thing uh, enthusiastic, then what he will do is he will wait till Friday and whatever the PUC is received throughout the week, he will collectively put it on Friday. So it becomes very difficult also for the officials also to deal with that. So draft should be uh, put uh, one by one and uh, basically bulk of uh, this thing, putting up of drafting is not really a good practice. Another very important uh, thing is when the draft contains multiple pages, so in the footer something like this has to be mentioned, page 1 of 5, page 2 of 5, page 5 of 5, so that the other person, the person receiving the draft and, you know, gets to know how many pages are there in the letter. Sometimes what happens is one page goes here and there. But since there is no page numbering mentioned in the uh, letter, we cannot say how many pages were there originally. So for the benefit of all, this is more important when it's relating to financial uh, calculations, sanctions and tabulations. So it becomes more important, but it should be, it, it's a standard practice and it should be done in all the correspondence. If there are multiple pages, please uh, number it like this so that the receiver also knows how many uh, pages uh, are supposed to be in this. Uh, draft or in this final uh, receipt. Then another thing is that all details of enclosure, details of enclosures. If you have seen uh, government uh, letters, you will see that at the uh, before the uh, signature it is written enclosure as stated above. Now this is a very vague term and uh, this clearly does not indicate how many enclosures are there with this cover letter. So it is always a best practice to give the details of the enclosure and after the body of the letter, just write enclosures, one, what is the enclosure, two, what is the enclosure, three, what is the enclosure. So this exact detail and numbering of enlisting of basically enclosure should be done so that the receiver by reading the front page, the cover letter, he knows how many enclosures are there and then he can check whether all the enclosures are received or not. So this is very uh, important uh, uh, practice which is generally not done. So uh, just to be uh, give more clarity to the receiver, this details of enclosure have to be given. Now those dealing assistants who are preparing the draft, before preparing the draft, several questions should be asked and looked into. The first question is, as I said, in many a cases, draft may not be required also. So this question has to be uh, pondered upon by the dealing assistant that is the draft necessary in the present case. So that is the first question. Second is who should be addressed and who should sign it. There are different levels. Suppose you are to send it to personnel department. Now personnel department it can be sent to the under secretary, it can be sent to the secretary, it can be sent to the deputy secretary at what level and then who should sign, can an ADC sign or a DC sign. So all those things have to be considered before you draft the letter. Now which form of letter is to be used? That is also to be considered whether it has to be a letter, whether it has to be a, a demi-official letter, whether this should be an office order, whether it has to be order. These different types of uh, letters and forms of communication I will discuss in a separate video under this very series. So just to keep watching this series. Uh, the next question dealing assistant should check is that is this whatever I have drafted, is this logically sequenced or not? It should be as per chronological order. If there is a sequence, there has to be followed. Next, whether proper security grading has to be uh, given, whether it has to be normal communication, classified or a secret communication or a confidential communication. So that also he has to think before making the draft. And then the very important thing is that you have to reference it. When you are putting up a reply to some letter, 
you have to make reference of that letter in your reply so that the recipient knows that this is in reference to or this is in reply to this particular letter letter number dated which was sent so that kind of referencing is very very important i have seen in many cases people miss that they directly mention the subject and send it now the receiver has no clue in which context this letter has, has been sent to him so because you know see why this happens you will say that by seeing the subject it should be clear what this is about but in government institutions there are so many correspondence so many you know folder full uh, full folders of dark come every day so in that situation where the volume of dark is so much referencing becomes very very important so referencing of dark is very very pivotal in that sense now in this video uh, we will also let us also discuss the different forms of since we are talking of drafting and noting let me also discuss the forms of various forms of these drafts forms of draft <clears throat> now one is letter the most simplest category is uh, basically letter which means that generally in offices when we write correspondence with the state government with the institutions with the heads with subordinate bodies or with public in general so the normal letters which are issued they are referred to as letter now the second category is do letter now what is this do letter now do letter is a letter which is correspondence between two officers and basically it is more on a friendly tone to congratulate to uh, wish somebody on the good work done or to put in some suggestions etc etc generally it comes from the higher side uh, to a higher level to a lower level do letter and this is basically written in a very friendly tone and uh, here we use yours sincerely instead of yours faithfully which is used in the letter so minor difference the position of the uh, salutation and everything is a bit different you can just google it uh, the, so basically what you have to uh, remember is that this is communication between two government officials which is more like a friendly uh, communication now the next type of uh, draft which can be there is poem office memorandum so generally here what you have to understand is that when a parent department issues some instructions to the subordinate offices for example personal department government of meghalaya have uh, formed a policy for the uh, assured career progression scheme acps now they have devised some kind of guidelines and these guidelines are to be issued to all deputy commissioner's office all sdo office and all other subordinate offices under the personnel department so it will issue a office memorandum so basically it is a instruction from higher departments to the subordinate offices there is no salutation in these kind of memorandums it is written in third person and basically it is to convey information and some kind of rules and regulation so this is uh, what is office memorandum now what is office order office order so office order you have to understand is that this is a specific uh, form where it is used for internal communication for example my office uh, deputy commissioner's office if i have to give some internal communication regarding leaves like these are to be followed these rules are to be followed if i have to sanction leave if i have to sanction uh, earned leave if i have to sanction gratuity if i have to sanction Uh, this encashment of leave after retirement all these things so these are internal communication which is meant for the internal functioning of our one particular uh, office in question so that for that we will use this kind of terminology office order now the next which is used is simply order now this is used in cases where there are some kind of relating to financial sanctions financial sanctions or conveying some kind of instructions to the public or to the other uh, institutions for example the uh, order under 144 in this covid times you know that the uh, night curfew is being imposed in uh, the throughout the country so how it is being imposed through a order under section 144 of the crpc so this is issued in the 
order form. So this uh, is the difference between office order and order which people generally confuse. Now next type of uh, uh, this drafting can be notification. Now what is notification? Generally it is not done in these subordinate offices. No, generally it is done from the higher uh, authorities when the government uh, publishes something in the gadget that it notifies. For example, some uh, let's say Meghalaya excise rules have been notified. So when we notify them, that means they have been published in the gadget, the official gadget of the government, it has been published and then a notification to that effect is made by the government. So this is a very particular kind of thing which is generally not used in uh, applicable for subordinate offices. The next type of uh, draft can be press note. It is also called as press communique when a government official or an office or an institution has to communicate something or clarify something to the people, this kind of format is used. Press note and whatever is to be shared with the public for uh, wide circulation and publicity that is published by the particular institution. Another uh, form of uh, this uh, draft can be minutes. You must have seen uh, that various uh, meetings takes place and whatever discussions are done in these meetings, they are recorded as uh, minutes of the meeting and then it is uh, recorded in third person, one, two, three, four, what has been discussed by whom, who said what, these are called the minutes of the meeting and then they are circulated to all the attendees of the meeting. So this is what you have to understand about the different form of draft. So I hope the clear, the difference uh, among, between some of the terms is very confusing sometimes. Letter, due letter, what is the difference? Office order, order, what is the difference? So I hope uh, by these simple discussions, uh, these uh, differences are clear and uh, we have discussed uh, some basics of uh, noting and drafting also. So I, I hope all the dealing assistants working in different government offices more or less the same and useful for everyone. So I hope this has been useful uh, for you. Uh, please subscribe to this channel for more such videos on office procedure and also share it with those uh, uh, dealing assistant if you know those who want to improve their drafting and in fact these uh, videos uh, are also aimed uh, to be used in training programs as well uh, in various offices so please share it and please hit the bell icon for more such uh, videos coming in the future and you can also mention in your comments what more topics i should cover relating to office procedure thank you so much for watching